Good evening, children, and welcome to the show. Yes, and believe me, you're welcome to the show. <laughs> Basil, belt up. Belt up? Don't you mean clank click? <laughs> Today, children, I'm going to read a fairy story. Hey, hang about. Hang about. <laughs> it's not one of those sexy stories, is it, Vince Hill? You mean Fanny Hill. Vince Hill's a singer. I know, that's the musical version. <laughs> boom, boom! Come on, come on, come on. Once upon a time, there were three bears. Oh, I see. It's a story about nudists, is it? No, <laughs> it's not. It's about a mother bear, a father bear, yeah. and a baby bear. Yes, and he was all moth-eaten, so they called him Fred Bear. <laughs> Might be my landlady, you know, Mr. Peter. She takes her teddy to bed every night. Oh, is he a little cuddly koala? No, he's a big Welsh window cleaner. <laughs> well, I don't think that's funny. No, neither does her husband. <laughs> come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Suddenly, one morning, yes? there came this weird noise from upstairs. Oh, I see. They were playing one of your records, were they? <laughs> well, this was before I could sing. Oh, you mean yesterday? <laughs> don't you eat me? Come on, come on, come on. It was Father Bear coming downstairs for his breakfast of porridge. Oh, my friend Freddy, you know, makes porridge. He gives you two choices, you know. Oh, what are they? Like it or lump it. <laughs> oh, dear, 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 dear. Come on, come on, come on. Father Bear sat down and yes. tried his porridge, but it was too hot. Oh, I see. He couldn't bear it. <laughs> So while the porridge cooled, the bears went for a walk in the woods. Yeah. Then along came Goldilocks. Oh, Jimmy Savile's in it, is he? <laughs> no, he's not. Goldilocks was very hungry. Oh, well, she could have had some of my jelly babies, you know. Oh, what are they, boys or girls? I don't know. I've bitten all the heads off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. Come on, come on, come on. Well, anyway, a jelly baby's no good. She hasn't had a bite for three days. Oh, well, she could have got a bite in my house. My dog would have obliged, Mr. Peter. <laughs> Actually, I've been training him to beg, you know. Oh, and does he make a good beggar? Well, he holds the money box very well, but he keeps dropping the tray of matches. <laughs> I thought that would have gotten better, didn't you, Mr. Peter? <laughs> come on, come on. Goldilocks sat on yes. one of the chairs and said, yes. This chair's too hard. Ah, well, it would be, wouldn't it? She hasn't got a bear behind, has she? <laughs> then she sat on the second chair, yes. then the third yes. chair. You see, she was very, very tired. Oh, I was tired last night, Mr. Peter. I slept like a log, you know. Oh, really? Uh, yes, I woke up in the fireplace. <laughs> oh, Basil, that's enough. I'm not reading any more of this story. You keep interrupting me. Oh. <laughs> oh, we are a little disturbed, Mr. Peter, aren't we? Well, you I, keep... can... I don't know what's come over you. You're not like this when we're picking daisies together. Ah, uh, no, I'm not, but I'm going now. Well, where are you going? I think I'm going to take up fox hunting. Oh, poor dear, dear. Good evening, ghastly to see you, to see you. Ghastly! Simpering little morons. <laughs> All right, Sybil, my loathe. No, we don't want to see you in your new frock. The viewers may have just eaten. <laughs> and normally we meet the eight who are going to generate, but unfortunately when they found out I was doing the program, six of them made a dash for it. <laughs> so let's meet the two who will have to do. Right, let's get started, shall we? Good evening. <laughs> no, it isn't. And who asked you anyway? <laughs> Speak when you're spoken to. You stop that! My dad didn't come here to be insulted by you. Oh, 
and who would you like him to be insulted by? Fanny Credit? <laughs> Malcolm Mugridge, Princess Anne? Hmm? Oh, yeah, that, that. Closer. Not too close. I don't mind standing next to the working classes, but I don't want to have to touch them. <laughs> now, according to this, you are father and daughter. Which one is which? I'm the daughter. Of course you are. Just testing to see if you had a modicum of intelligence. <laughs> it also says you are Albert Lunge. Yes. Mm. Is that your real name? Yes. Mm. Shame, shame. <laughs> Now, it says on this card, uh, Fifi Whiplash will give French lessons... Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, wrong card. Now, it says on this card that you work uh, in the antique business and that you restore things. Yes, that is right. Yes, I do restore things. Oh, perhaps you could restore him. <laughs> right, well, let's get started with the first game, shall we? Over there. Now, here's our first game. Here you see three pairs of... Legs. <laughs> Very good, Mr. Lunge. Ever considered death as a career? <laughs> oh, pity. Right. Yes, we have three pairs of legs. Now, what I want you to do, I want you to tell me to whom these three pairs of legs belong. <laughs> you tell us more about the legs? <laughs> yes, people walk with them. Oh, but, but this is impossible. No, 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 people do walk with them, yes. I'll show you. <laughs> See, it's quite simple, people do walk with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, those legs could belong to anybody. How are we supposed to guess their owners? Well, how should I know? I mean, you're the one who wants to win the cuddly toy. <laughs> anyway, you couldn't get the question right. Your time's up. Come on, get this one off. Come on, come on. Get it off. Get the other one off. Get over there. Go on, get off, get off. Right, now then, we come to our second game. Now then, here we have uh, four pieces of very famous classical music. We have, first of all, Brahms' fourth, Tchaikovsky's first, Beethoven's fifth, and Fellini's eight and a half. Excuse me, Fellini's eight and a half isn't a piece of music. No, no, you're quite right, it's his shoe size. <laughs> right, now what I want you to do is we're going to play some music and I want you to tell me what the music is from. What of these three pieces of very famous classical music it's from. Listen carefully. <laughs> Beat Alvin's face. Tchaikovsky's first. No, no, it was Puccini's Madame Butterfly. <laughs> it wasn't on the board. I mean, that's the trouble with you people today. You want everything made easy for you. Yeah, Shut up. Shut up. Get out of there. Sorry, I'm tired. Now then, um, do you want to uh, quit while you're losing, or would you like to answer the questions? I'll take the question, please. Right, I'm going to ask you two questions. I want three correct answers. <laughs> Anyone in the audience helping will be taken out and shot. <laughs> First question, how many dogs were found guilty at last year's Irish sheepdog trial? <laughs> Yes. Uh, could I have the question again, please? Sorry, wrong answer. <laughs> second question. You have one second to spell chrysanthemum. <laughs> sorry, your time is up. You lost. Yeah, but we no, didn't... sorry, you lost. I've won. Now go on, get off. <laughs> I've won, I've won, I've won. Today is a generation game. Today is a century. I've won. Hello there. I'm 
David Bellamy, the thinking man's Arthur Mullard. <laughs> now, a lot of people get very, very confused with the Latin names given to plants and flowers. In fact, some of you don't know whether you're on, your asters, or your elders. <laughs> But here we have a rhododendron. <laughs> here we have a rhododendron. Here's a crocus. <laughs> now you can talk to plants and flowers and it will make them grow, but you must talk softly to them. For instance, if I was going to talk to this little chap here, I would say, Who's a pretty boy? <laughs> Who's a pretty boy? And if that didn't work, and it didn't, I would say, Grow your great twig! Grow! <laughs> you see, if you talk to plants and flowers, they will grow. As a matter of fact, last week I had a chinwag with a marrow. <laughs> I had a chimwag with a marrow, <laughs> and look what happened. Now, is there anyone here tonight who can boast of having a marrow as big as this? <laughs> so, you see, it does happen. And also, if you listen very, very carefully, you can hear flowers talking to each other. Larry? Larry? Are you awake yet? What a gay day. <laughs> oh, who'd have thought it? Last week I was in a bed of pansies in Putney. And here I am, starring at the Chelsea Flower Show. But tell me, Rose, how are you, love? Wonderful. You'll never guess what happened to me last night. Oh, don't say you've had your petal spray. <laughs> no, I was pollinated. <laughs> Look at me, I've been in this pot all night. Larry? What? You're not a very healthy-looking flower, are you? No, you see, unfortunately, when I was very young, I was nipped in the bud by a bad-tempered tomtit. <laughs> I told you, didn't I, were you? Oh, some of these gardeners can be very brutal, can't they? Oh, you don't have to tell me. Nobody knows how my roots have suffered just because that vicar was a bit cack-handed with his trowel. <laughs> Yes, but have you ever been forced in a greenhouse? No, but I did have to fight off Bill and Ben in a potting shop. <laughs> oh, but nobody knows how I've suffered. And ever since Percy Thrower tried to squeeze me between the hardy annuals. Do you know, I've never been squeezed between the hardy annuals. Oh, you haven't lived, Rose. Of course, you would have to be very careful. I mean, you don't want to go and spoil your prized blooms, do you? Look at the muck in here. Oh, that's not Mark, it's pollen. It's what the bees come looking for. Oh, don't talk to me about bees. I had one round me, flying round me for four hours the other day. I can't tell you what he did with his proboscis. <laughs> hey, up here comes that bloke with the garden shears. I hope he's not after me. Oh, oh, what's happened? I've been pruned. <laughs> A flubber, lubber, 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 lubber. <laughs> ever so flubber, lubber, lubber, lubber. Oh, this is ridiculous. It really is. <laughs> flubber, lubber, 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 lubber. Oh, no, don't titter. No, don't. <laughs> oh, no, don't listen. This is ridiculous. I shouldn't be doing this. I'm a thespian. No. <laughs> Thespian girl, thespian, here, listen. I know it's, it's no fun. I, 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 up to me are the annuals in potato peelings and cuts. It's like standing in a bog. Anyway. <laughs> no, listen, you see, the thing is, you see, no, ah, it could have been worse. Could have been ever so worse for Francis. No, they wanted me to be Zebedee on the magic roundabout. I thought I should say so. I'm not having a bit of coil wire shoved up the left leg of me trousers. <laughs> No, and then, no, ah, oh, yes, no. Then they asked me to do sooty. He wanted me to be sooty. I thought, oh, no. I mean, 
That Harry Corbett, he never cuts his fingernails, you know. <laughs> anyway, here we are. I, oh, I wonder if weed has got up yet. Oh, yeah, oh no, 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 don't it. Last night, weed. Strange, strange fella, weed. Strange fella. Last night, he put vinegar on his bulbs. Yes. <laughs> he thought they were pickled onions. Yes! <laughs> oh, please yourselves. Lover, lover, oh, lover, 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 somebody lover, else lover, with a speaking part. Lover, All right, girl, all right, all right. All right, don't build your part up. <laughs> Give him an inch, they took a mile. Yes. Anyway, which one are you, Mrs. Bill or Mrs. Ben? Bill and Ben aren't married. Oh, so the rumours we've heard are true, then. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Do you know who I am? I'm a wild rose. Oh, me luck's changed. <laughs> up being yes. cooped up in this flower pot what i need is to be taken out yes. and bedded down somewhere oh. <laughs> oh they're so forward on these kids programs aren't they yes in fact if it doesn't happen soon i'll get droopy buds oh, <laughs> oh no don't sit her missus it could happen to you you know yes actually yes. i should be pruned have you been pruned? No, I always... <laughs> get out. Go on, get out. <laughs> no, I haven't been pruned. I always stand like this. <laughs> it confuses the worms, yes. <laughs> it confuses the worms, missus. <laughs> Look, she's nodded off, this one down here. Look, nodded off. Eyes down for a full house. Yes, she's awake now. Look. Oh, dear, I don't know. Do you know what I'd like? Yes. I'd like a bumblebee to fly over here and collect my pollen and then fly back and give it to you. Well, don't worry, girl. I'll save the bee a trip and I'll come over myself. Yeah. Oh, it's a <laughs> Call my bluff, which is a sort of give us a clue without Lionel Blair. <laughs> Let's face it, anything without Lionel Blair has got to be worth watching. <laughs> For those of you who haven't seen it before, the rules are very simple, and so are our contestants. <laughs> so, first of all, let's meet Frank Muir's team. Everyone's a fruit and not fruit. Crazy for those tasty nuts and well done. Thank you, Frank. We'll let you know. Now, my guest tonight began telling jokes at the age of 25, but now he tells jokes that are much older. <laughs> a brilliant brain, a consummate comic, a waggish wit, a white little knoll bomb monkhouse. Thank you, Frank. The nicest compliment I've ever deserved. May I say that I regard Frank Muir as a breath of fresh air. In other words, he should be dangled in a toilet. <laughs> well, that's Frank's team, and on my left, Arthur Marshall. <laughs> well, my special guest this evening is someone I'm perfectly thrilled and delighted to welcome onto the show. Uh, it's often been said his face is his fortune, which would explain why he's always broke. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Frankie Howard. Here, watch it, Mush. Oh, do, do you, oh the cheek. Cheek, yes. Uh, here, listen, I must tell you, when I arrived here today, <laughs> I think you'll see, mm, I caused a sensation among the ladies, I can tell you, yes. Well, I mean, it wasn't my fault. I thought I was in the gents. <laughs> I think we're ready to play the game. And the first word is quacker. Frank. A quacker is something you pull at a Christmas party. <laughs> not to be confused with a little quacker, which is something you pull at a BBC office party. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds fatuous enough. Bob. Well, quacker is a simple alternative spelling for the word Quaker, which is a member of a religious group that believe in a very strict upbringing. 
Yeah, I know just what you mean. I had a very strict upbringing. Yes, until I was 16, I didn't know the difference between a jock strap and a mouse trap. Yes. No wonder I was in agony every time I played cricket. Yes. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted, a Quaker is someone who goes to church every day and prays for wicked women. Mind you, that is a waste of time. I pray for wicked women every night, but I never get one. <laughs> <laughs> so then it's a BBC secretary and it's a Quaker who doesn't get his oats. <laughs> Arthur. Arthur. I'm sorry. Uh, I think I'll go for Mr. Monkhouse. True or bluff, Bob? <laughs> yes, indeed, another word for Quaker. Now, if we hurry, I think we've time for one more. What do you mean, one more? I, I, I haven't had the first one yet. <laughs> Noose now. Arthur. Yes, now, a noose now is a very heavy drinker who not only goes out and paints the town red every night, but he goes out at lunchtime to give it an undercoat. <laughs> I always thought that noose now was something they said on BBC television each evening at nine o'clock. Here is the noose now. Uh, right, we're running late now, Frankie, so can we have your definition, please? Right, now, let's have some mush. Yes, now then, yes, noose now. Noose now, yes, now, ladies and gentlemen, a noose now is uh, another name for a riddle. Yes, a riddle. Mm. I'll give you, for, I'll give, no, I'll give you, an, for, for instance, yes. What is the technical term for an attractive young lady who isn't on the pill? Mother. <laughs> Just old, no old to no real. <laughs> right, so it's a tippler or a form of riddle. Frank? Hmm. I think I'll go for a riddle. <laughs> well, I'll have to choose myself. Oh dear, I, I know this. I, I really do. It's in the Oxford Dictionary, which I read every night. Page 593, line 17. I remember it now. It's, it's neither of those two definitions. Noose now is a very bad spell of weather. Robert, dear Robert, if you go over to the board and turn it the other way up, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> oh, don't get any points for that because no one likes a clever dick. <laughs> well, there we have it, and that's all we have time for. So if you've enjoyed the program, my name is Robert Robinson. If you haven't enjoyed the programme, my name is Melvin Bragg. <laughs> Good night. Celebrity Challenge Tournament. Asking the questions, Bamba Gascoigne. Good evening and welcome to another edition of Celebrity Challenge, the Clever Dick's version of Mastermind. <laughs> Tonight we're going to be meeting some of the finest brains in Britain, but well, that's enough about me. <laughs> <laughs> but first, let's meet the first of our two teams. First representing the funny men, we have... Ronnie Corbett, small comedian, part-time garden gnome, <laughs> and lover of tall women, will bring own trampoline. <laughs> Basil Fawlty, reluctant hotelier, henpicked husband, and insufferable snob. <laughs> and that's only the nice side of me. <laughs> Al Garner, redundant docker, working class Tory, and West Ham supporter. Money, <laughs> <Andy> And <laughs> well, that completes the funny man's team. Now let's meet the personalities team. Well, wow, thank you very much, Mr. Gasco. Mr. Gasco. Bamba. <laughs> uh, my name is Eddie Waring and I am a rugby league raconteur and, uh, and also I'm an elocution teacher to a railway train announcer. Uh, what are you getting from me? Uh, Huey Green, humanitarian, 
an opportunity giver. But don't forget, customers, send in those votes. Boop, 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 boop. And if you can't spell opportunity knocks, then you're stupid. Jimmy Hill, see all, hear all, and know all. An expert on this, an expert on that, and an expert on the other. Right, that completes the personalities, team. Right, let's begin. Your start of a ten, hands on buzzers or anything you've got handy. <laughs> Who wrote the words of little things mean a lot? Was it Snow White? <laughs> God, how ignorant can you get? <laughs> how ignorant do you want me to be? <laughs> Incidentally, friends, while we're talking about the little people, let me tell you something. Your votes are still coming in for Lena Zavaroni. How about that? <laughs> and I mean that most sincerely. How about a nice round of applause there? Excuse me, got a little froggy in the throat. Well, cough it up, it might be Charles Aznavour. <laughs> <laughs> Guess out of ten, fingers on buzzers. Who said, I am the greatest, I am the best? I think it was me, and even if it wasn't, it should have been. Oh, blimey, I look at him. Thinks he's gold and looks like a goat. <laughs> Uh, I'll ignore that. Another start of a ten, no conferring. Who invented the hula hoop and who later improved it? That's a very good question. Nice round of applause for Bamba there. <laughs> the hula hoop was first invented in 1812 by an Irishman and was later improved in 1820 by an Englishman who put the hole in the middle. <laughs> Wrong. Start of a ten. In ancient times, what was the creature called who was half man and half horse? Bronco Bill. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not right. Of course it's right. Of course it's right, you silly great public school punt. <laughs> no, it isn't, you stupid, bigoted, ignorant cretin. It was called a centaur. <laughs> oh, blimey, look who's poking his oar in now. A long, lanky grammar school twit. <laughs> Watch it, laddie. They bred us tough at our school. We played rugby, you know. Well, that explains it then, cos compared to football, rugby's a puffs game. <laughs> Which stands to reason, even the ball's bent. <laughs> well, the British Alf should say that to our uh, bamba, because we do get uh, a lot of letters from all over Great Britain asking all these rugby league players, Jesse boys. Well, all I can say is, if you try and make a pass at them, make sure uh, you've got the rugby ball in your hand, otherwise you could be in for an up and under. <laughs> Yes, out of ten. What is considered to be Achilles' tenderest part? I have written my answer down on this piece of paper. Achilles' <laughs> tenderest spot was his heel. What's your answer? I pass. <laughs> Stupid little man. <laughs> Start us for ten. Fingers on buzzers. Must hurry. No conferring. Who in the Shakespeare play say, and I quote, Gazoot's woman, look, I am undone. Flash a Gordon. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, start us for ten. Literature. What can you tell me about Rudyard Kipling? He makes exceedingly good cakes. <laughs> you objectionable, unshaven little philistine. Rudyard Kipling was an author. God. Well interrupted, faulty. Start us for ten. A little louder, old chap. Start us for ten. <laughs> <laughs> what people spend most of their working lives up to their waist in water? The street walkers of Venice. <laughs> you stupid little man, the answer is the rice harvesters in the paddy fields of Borneo. <laughs> Correct, your bonus for five. What is idle vice? <laughs> the street walkers of Venice on a one day strike! <laughs> You uncouth, loudmouth, yobbo, idle voice is a mountain flower. And if you know the answer, it's probably a pansy. <laughs> <laughs> mountain flower is correct. Start of a ten. What is the slang name given to people who wear spectacles? Aye, 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 aye. <laughs> correct, four eyes. <laughs> Uh, your vote is for 15. Five points each question. Which nationality make the best lovers? The British. And how about a nice round of applause for that? <laughs> but of course, even though the British make the best lovers, the Japanese make them smaller and cheaper. 
Who said, I can make England great again? I did. <laughs> and I will when I finish with Saudi Arabia, Coventry City and BBC Sport. <laughs> what is the name given to the swelling caused by the bite of an Australian bear? A koala halumpa. <laughs> Is. And that means uh, with a score at 85 to 45, this means it's a win for the funny man. Congratulations to our funny man, commiserations to the personalities. Well, that's it from Celebrity Heavens this week. Hope we see you again soon. Good night. <laughs>Bob and the big box game where the rules are very simple providing you've got eight O levels and a degree in double dutch <laughs> let me the star now let's meet the lesser celebrities starting with the man who made mary whitehouse famous alf garnett look don't, don't get small with me sonny jim i mean you can be replaced by that charlie williams <laughs> <laughs> yes that's what he's afraid of as well next are you free john inman Oh, I'm not free, but I'm reasonable. <laughs> Without my tan, I'd just come back from a fortnight's camping holiday in the Isle of Man. In fact, he was flown back this morning on a plane of the Queen's flight. <laughs> Next, we have a man whose mouth has been to football what the windmill theatre has been to show business. It never closes. <laughs> Brian Clough. It's about time they had a bit of class on this show. <laughs> those three make up the top row. Picking up the middle row, in box one, we have Frank Spencer. Hello, Betty. Yes, it is. It's Daddy on the television. Next to him, we have a man with a very high IQ. Oh, I bet I could reach it with my tape measure. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Willie Rushton. Hello there. I've just worked out that if you laid every Chinese married couple end to end, you'd end up with a double yellow line 2,000 miles long and nowhere to park your car. <laughs> Next to him, a man who makes Elton John look positively plain, Liberace. Hi, everybody. <laughs> it's really great to be here in England. You know, I love England so much, I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> I'm sure, Lee, that Harold Wilson will let you have it very cheap. And those three make up the middle row. And along the bottom line, we have that well-known TV interrogator, Robin Day. Good evening. Well, I must say, I'm somewhat confused. When I wrote in, I asked to meet the brain of Britain. Uh, how do you do, Robin? <laughs> and next to Robin, we have a man who spends his spare time peeping through his telescope at heavenly bodies. A star who's usually looking at the stars, Patrick Moore. Hello, uh, pay attention. <laughs> Actually, I, I, I'm a little confused. I'm not used to these sort of programs. As a matter of fact, I'm not quite sure whether I'm on my Aurora or my Porygadis. <laughs> Last but by no means least, a man who gives elocution lessons to Henry Cooper, Arthur Mullard. Watch him, me old cock sparrows. My God, how uncouth. <laughs> Mr. Mullard, the raid in Spain falls mainly on the plane. They're lucky, because where I come from, it comes through a dirty grey hole in the ceiling. <laughs> and those are the nine celebrities for this week. Now let's meet this week's contestants. Miss Cross, what is your name? Rose Ada Nora Doris Yates. Rose Ada Nora Doris Yates. So according to your initials, you're Randy. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Monkhouse, you are a one. Oh, that's news to me, I can tell you. <laughs> tell me, Rose, you pretty little thing. What do you do for a living? I work for a famous chain store. Doing what? Making chains. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. North, what, uh, what is your name? I'm Roy Smart. And I work for the Inland Revenue. Don't we all these days? <laughs> right, let's start the game. Uh, Miss Cross, pick a star. I pick Alf Garnet. Alf, your question is, if you cross a zebra with a pig, what do you get? Oh, that's easy, isn't it? I mean, shut up, you might learn something. <laughs> if you cross a zebra with a pig, you get striped sausages. <laughs> Is that correct? No. Go 
course it is. Of course it is, you silly moo. It's against the reason, Danny. I'm sorry, Al. She gets across. Now, you, sir, pick a star. Uh, Brian Clough. Brian, what was the exact route taken by the greatest man who ever lived? I started at Derby. <laughs> and then went to Brighton, then to Leeds, and then ended up in Nottingham. No, Brian, you misunderstand me. The man I am referring to made the journey on a simple ass. I would have done, but Don Revy wouldn't give me a piggyback. <laughs> Was he correct? No. You get a nod. Your turn, Rose. Frank Spencer. Frank, can you tell me, where are the Trossocks? Who Betty, they're asking me a rude question. <laughs> I don't know where my Trossocks are. My mum never told me the facts of life. <laughs> I was 11 before she told me I was a boy. As that was no answer, I'll give you a cross. Oh, look, Betty, she fancies me. She'd give me a kiss. <laughs> Roy, your next choice. Uh, I'd like to try my luck with John Inman. That is the best offer he's had all week. <laughs> John, I want you to describe Damascus. Damascus, isn't that the stuff that kills 99% of all household jokes? <laughs> oh, wait, I remember now. It's a place in the East where all the women have their faces completely covered. What a good idea. I think I'll take my old woman there. <laughs> Was John correct? Yes. That gives you another knot. Oh, blimey, this is marvellous, isn't it? Marvellous! Starts off as a quiz game. Ends up as a gravy commercial. Your turn, Rose. Pick another star. Arthur Moore. Arthur, what are catacombs? Catacombs. <laughs> Aren't they what cats part their ear with? <laughs> Is he correct? Yes. I'm sorry, that's a nod to your opponent. <laughs> uh, Roy, pick another star. Uh, Liberace. Lee, who found the Golden Fleece and what did he do with it? Uh, it was my tailor and he made it into a jacket for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, I'm only kidding. It was Jason who found the Golden Fleece and if I remember correctly, he was grabbed by the Argonauts. Was <laughs> <laughs> Liberace's answer correct? Yes. I'm sorry, your opponent gets across. Well, it's obvious where you're going now. It's to Willie Rushton. Willie, tell us, what is the shortest distance between two points? Hmm, the shortest distance between two points is... Um... Raquel Welsh's bra. <laughs> well, that was not the answer I thought of, I can tell you. <laughs> well, don't look at me. I'm still trying to work out the one about Jason and the Ogonor. Well, was Willie's answer correct? No. But you are, and you win the game. It gives me enormous pleasure <laughs> to declare these curtains open. <laughs> what a splendid day it is, it really is. Ah, tea. You know, your breakfast was ready half an hour ago. It really was. I'm awfully sorry, dear, but I didn't know which kitchen you were in. <laughs> Is there any mail for me? Just these. Ah. Oh, good, my football coupon. <laughs> Where's the letter opener? It's his day off. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, Charles, I don't ever think you'll win the pools. You still think a treble chance is a night out with the three degrees. <laughs> oh, look at 
this is marvellous. Derek Beatty has asked us to appear on Mr. and Mrs. That'll be nice, won't it? It'll be wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's from Harry Seacombe. <laughs> He's invited us round to his house for a party. Oh, I don't think we should go, dear. Oh, why not? He's such a lovely pudding of a man. He really is. <laughs> well, and he's just been knighted. Well, that's precisely my point, you see. Uh, if we start fraternising with title folk, people will think we're social climbing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who's eaten all the Rice Krispies? <laughs> I'm afraid I did. Oh, what a shame. I, I do love pouring my milk on them and, and watching them go snap, crackle and pater. <laughs> well, it's your own fault for not coming down on time. Well, it isn't easy taking a bath with three photographers from the Daily Star peering through the window. You really should try standing up to them. Oh, what a picture that would make. I don't know why they're so interested in us all the while. I mean, what's so special about us anyway? I'm so glad we decided to have a quiet wedding. Yes. It was rather splendid, wasn't it? I, I, I was pleased that it wasn't over the top or ornate in any way. We must do it again sometime. No. What? Will these tabloids ever leave us alone? I mean, they're now doing a page three look-alike. Oh, of me? No, of me. <laughs> now, come along, Charles. Eat up all your breakfast. Make you big and strong. Oh, I, do, I do wish you wouldn't treat me like one of those infants in your kindergarten. I mean, I, I, I'm a grown, mature, 33-year-old man. Now, where's my boiled egg new? I mean, my... <laughs> <laughs> My boiled egg. Ah, this is the bit I always enjoy. I hereby dub thee Sir Willie Hamilton. <laughs> Where's my soldiers? They're outside, marching up and down. No, I mean you've forgotten the toast. Sorry. The Queen. <laughs> Oh, the wretched film. I do wish we were extra rectory. I really do. <laughs> Hello. Yes, yes. Charles Philip. Yeah? Not Philip Charles. And who was the one who was giving away all my worldly goods? Well, two wrongs don't make a right. <laughs> Oh, oh, hello, Anne. How are the horses? <laughs> oh, no, no, don't worry, it was just a little tiff. Yeah. Um, yes, but well, of course I never really thought about that. Yes, that's, that's quite right. You married a Mark and I married a Spencer. <laughs> yeah, I suppose if we're not satisfied, we can take them back and change them. <laughs> Very droll, very droll. Yeah. Give my regards to, um, uh, what's his name? Don't you? Yeah. you know, Charles, I think it's high time we had a family. What's wrong with the one we've got? I mean, they're very well connected. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm longing to hear the pitter-patter of tiny feet. I really am. We have the corgis that Granny gave us. <laughs> but you want a son and heir, don't you? Well, yes, I do. I, I want him to have all the things that I never had. Like India. <laughs> so, yeah, I really must go. I'm rather late. But before you go, aren't you forgetting something? Oh, I, I'm awfully sorry, dear. Really. What's this? It's a tea towel. Oh, how positively novel. I mean, what does one do with it? Sort of dry tea? Huh? <laughs> I suppose it plugs in somewhere, doesn't it? Oh, all right. Off you go. Yes. Mustn't keep your polo pony waiting. Yeah. What, are you, what are you actually doing today? I'm having my Welsh lesson. Oh, splendid, splendid. How's it, how's it going? Tremendously. Perhaps you'd like to say goodbye to me in Welsh. Oh, all right. 
Nostar Boyo, isn't it? <laughs> Look you then, Saucepan Bar. I think that's another reason why we shouldn't go to Harry Seacombe's place. Uh, sort of, uh, come in. Excuse me, sir, may I take a photograph? Because, you see, my newspaper doesn't have a photo of you and Her Royal Highness. Well, that's amazing. I mean, which paper are you from? The Daily Worker. <laughs> Do you mind? It won't take a second, okay? Do we really want our picture in the Daily Worker? Why not, dear? We are daily workers. <laughs> Excuse me, could you just wait one moment, please? If we're going to do this, we might as well do it correctly, I think. lined up for you all in the pantomime tonight. And here's me favourite. It's me dad. Bar and I dub. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now don't listen. Don't sit down. <laughs> listen, oh dear. <laughs> listen, no, I'm in the wrong role. This is, no, I should be playing the handsome prince. Yes. Well, I tried it, you see. I put on the tights. I sounded more like the strangled princess. <laughs> oh, Dad, Dad, I'm so unhappy. I do so want to go to the ball. Oh, don't despair, Cinders. Don't despair. <laughs> oh, come on, love, don't nod up. <laughs> oh, God, this reacting bit. No, Cinders, you see, you're not alone. No, I mean, I'm your father, and I'm very fond of you. I do so wish I could go to the ball, to Prince Charming Ball. I mean... It's just a woman's intuition because something tells me something's going to happen tonight. Yes, listen, 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 listen. That was getting like cracker jack, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Dad, I just love to go to the ball. I can just imagine it now. Prince Charming would be waiting at the door, and just as I arrived, he would say to me, "Step." Inside, love. Let me show all right, all right, all right, all right. Don't do that. Oh, that's it, that's it. Oh, thank God, she's run out of it. <laughs> listen, now listen, I know. She... <laughs> but she never misses a chance, does she, poor soul? Shame. Anyway, listen, I'm off to the ball yeah. now. But don't worry, go. Don't worry. You won't be on your own, because Buttons is coming on in a minute. Oh. Mind you, I'm playing the part myself. Well, they won't spend the money for the actors here at the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> Wish me mate buttons were here. <laughs> Did somebody call? <laughs> it is me, buttons. <laughs> mind, madam. I'm a married man. <laughs> it's all right, Jessica. Daddy's only acting. <laughs> <laughs> have, have you played Phantom Man before? Oh, yes. I was in Jack and Bucket the Shovel. <laughs> Bucket and Shovel? Don't you mean Jack and the Beanstalk? No, the cow came doing a whoopsie. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. never mind about all that. Have you got the stuff for the Fairy Queen? Yes, I got a pumpkin. Oh, lovely. And what, what about six white mice? Well, the men at the pet shop will only let me have two. Oh. <laughs> hmm. Ooh! They're doing rude things. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's ten of them in there now. You seem surprised. Yes, the man at the pet shop said they were brothers. <laughs> well, it's almost impossible to tell the difference. Well, they didn't have any trouble, did they? Oh. <laughs> 
going to do with ten white mice? Ooh, correction. There's fifteen in there now. <laughs> I'm going to take these away quickly. Well, to the pet shop. No, the family planning clinic. <laughs> doesn't look as if I got a lot of chance of going to the ball. Here I am, all alone. Not even a piece of chocolate to stuff in me gob. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wonder who that is. Evening all. And you must be clinkers. Oh. Get off. I'm Cinders. Same thing. You're both hot stuff. Isn't it funny? Tell me, are you my fairy godmother? No. Don't let the walk fool you. I learned to walk like that to keep me out of the army. No, I am Bunny Prince Charming. I am your humble servant, sire. Tell me, who sent you to me? I came of my own free will, bringing in this little glass slipper. And whoever this fits will spend the rest of their life with me. Oh, you're welcome to try it on with me. That's very kind of you, but I'll see. <laughs> I'll see if the slipper fits first. Can I have it? Oh, this slipper will never fit me. It's a size two and a half. You should worry. Whoever that slipper fits, I have to spend the rest of my life with. And I know of only one person who takes a size two and a half. Who's that? There's O'Connor! <laughs> right, where is everybody? Come on, don't scut there in the woodwork. Crawl out, whoever you are. God, so this is where all the actors with bad agents end up, is it? Oh. Well, I'll make you learn your lines. Mind you, why anybody should want to learn these lines, I will never know. Morning, I'm Adam Chance. Oh, are you boasting or apologising? I'm one of the leading actors in Crossroads. Oh, I see. Then you're apologising. <laughs> no, but I carry a lot of weight around here. Oh. In that case, uh, carry my bag up to my room, and I'll go and inspect the kitchen. <laughs> oh, you're dressed as a chef. Oh, are you Cordon Bleu? No, I'm a Ranger supporter. <laughs> We've got a jocular jock here, haven't we? Oh, no, I wouldn't say I was very comical. No, I would. I've seen you acting. <laughs> well, while I'm here, I'll have a look at some of the cuisine. Good God. This soup smells awful. What is it? It's green pea. Well, oh, that would explain things, then. <laughs> Pathetic. You see, what this show needs is someone like Paul Newman or Robert Redford, a sort of international superstar sex symbol. <laughs> I think you do be looking for someone like me, Gaffer. You do be, do be, do be. <laughs> My word, it's a talking Tonka toy. <laughs> uh, what are you doing down there anyway? Well, I be doing an odd job for the gaffer, I do be. Oh, I see, you're a plumber. <laughs> Ever thought of having your brains lagged? <laughs> I've been unblocking the pipes with this. Miss Diane say I do be very good with my plunger. <laughs> In fact, I'm quite au fait with a plunger myself. Uh, let me show you. <laughs> Mr. McPhee, about today's menu, um, what is sausage espania? Oh, that's toad in the ole. <laughs> and uh, puree of petit pois? That's mushy piece. <laughs> yeah, I see. Benny sat on them again, did he? <laughs> Great balls of fire. Oh, that's curry dumplings. The suet doesn't rise, but you do. I suppose you're wondering if Mr. McPhee is really like that, or is he acting? And if he's acting, what is he doing in Crossroads? <laughs> yes, what is it? Yeah. What? Uh, thank you. Okay, okay, that's enough. Okay, fine. 
God, how this show ever gets into the ratings is beyond me. Yes, what is it? Ah, oh, it's you, Sybil, dear. Oh, you're not well. Oh, uh, nothing, um, nothing trivial, I hope. <laughs> uh, since I've arrived at Crossroads, it has reached new heights. Um, the AA has given us three stars, one to replace Noel Gordon and the other idiots. <laughs> oh, and we've got a word in Egan Roney's good food guide. Yes, I think the word is yuck. <laughs> uh, who? Noel Gordon. Uh, you'd like to speak to her. Oh, well, uh, hang on a minute, dear. Hang on. Uh, Noel! 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 Oh, God, sounds like a Christmas carol, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, dear, I've just, um, I've just remembered that Noel Gordon isn't here anymore. No, she's left to make a film with Larry Grayson. Mm, she's going to play his wife. Yes, it is a science fiction. <laughs> Come in. Come in. I would if I could. Uh, having trouble? The handles come off the door and now I can't get three. Oh, well, no, let me help. <laughs> um... Sorry. <laughs> you just suit for me, gaffer. I do be love eating soup, I do be, do be, do be. <laughs> Imbecile, that's alphabet soup. It's not for eating, it's for reading. When? Whenever you forget your lines, which in your case is about every five seconds. Well, have you know, Mr. Faulty, I be a very good actor. I be doing Shakespeare, I do. Oh, really? Um, that I would love to hear. Go on, do a bit of Shakespeare. Go on. <clears throat> do be or not do be? <laughs> that will be the question. Gaffer. <laughs> what is it, Benny? It's a pencil, Mr. Chan. <laughs> yeah, they do be saying that Gaffer Faulty, he do be finding a way of stopping any of us. Uh, be doing like Noel Gordon and escaping away from crossroads. Now, how is he going to do that? I don't know, but he do be saying the next idiot who do be trying it will get a nasty shot. I'd be going, Gaffer. Good night. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, but we, uh, we have to keep them in here somehow. Okay, end of sketch. Cue applause. Good evening. Did you hear about the Irish tap dancer? Fell over in the sink. <laughs> There's the one about the Irish con man who bought a return ticket on the railway and didn't go back. <laughs> <coughs> the other night, I had an Irish seven-course dinner. Do you know what an Irish seven-course dinner is? It's six Guinness and a potato. <laughs> I heard a lovely story the other day about two Irishmen. Mick and Seamus. And they were very big Irishmen. You know what I mean? Great big fellows. Enormous great fellows. Built like brick sheds. <laughs> they had their shovels in their top pockets. <laughs> Mick said to Seamus, he said, I think while we're in London, we should rob a bank. Seamus said, well, I don't think that would be a good idea because they'd recognize us. They'd recognize our accents. They would know we were Irish. He said, well, that's no problem. What we'll do is we'll take electrocution lessons. <laughs> so a couple of months later, they have this speech training and they go into the bank in London with the shotguns. And they go up to the counter and they'd had all the speech training, so they thought they were going to get away with it. 
So they go up to the counter and they say, excuse me, my man, but would you mind awfully putting up your hands and let me having all the money you have in your safe? And the fellow behind the counter said, you're Irish, aren't you? <laughs> and Mick said, sure, how did you know that? He said, you've sawn the wrong end of your shotgun. <laughs> having an afternoon nap, I'm afraid. Afternoon? But, but, but it's eight o'clock in the evening. Is it really? Aren't the nights drawing in these days? <laughs> What's the problem? Ah, it's the guests, you see. They're getting, getting restless. They're waiting for the cavalry to arrive. Oh, I see. Well, don't worry, Major. I'll soon get things swinging. That's good, that's good. Yeah? Ah, yes, what? Oh, it's you, Sybil, my dearest one. Yes. Um, look, Sybil, what did you do with the dining room key? We're all stuck out here in the lobby. <laughs> yes, the lobby! Of course I'm not getting flustered, I'm in the myself! <laughs> no, not unless you count this morning when, in actual fact, I gave a saucer of milk to the turkey and stuffed the cat! <laughs> yes, Sybil, no Sybil, three bags full, Sybil! Drop dead, Sybil! Dead <laughs> what? <laughs> Mr. Forty? Well, go on, do it. <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Kiss me. Ah, yes, well, I would, Miss Gatsby, but unfortunately I've run out of anaesthetic. <laughs> I expect you say that to all the girls. <laughs> no, only to the old lady. <laughs> a good time? No, we're not. Good, 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 good. Right, now then, until the cabaret arrives, who's for some fun and games? Well, I... Yes, to... I'm sure. <laughs> Anybody else? I'm not playing any games. But, sir, you are here to enjoy yourself, so you'll do as you're damn well told. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, let's do silly walks. Silly walks? Well, you'll win easy. You are a poofter. <laughs> what? I said, you are a poofter. Yes, sir. Well, don't worry, sir. You're perfectly safe. This is my day off. <laughs> right. Uh, silly walks, and I'll start. <laughs> Sorry, Sybil, can't stop now. I'm being silly. <laughs> right, that's one to me. Who's next? I told you he'd win, didn't I? That's because he's a puffed <laughs> up. I say, I say, let's play charades. You know, somebody mimes something, and we have to guess what it is. Good idea, Major. I tell you what, Miss Gatsby, why don't you take all, all your clothes off, and we'll have to guess whether you're an unmade bed or a prune on legs. <laughs> I, I do think I, I do think I fancy that. No, second thoughts, I don't think we would either. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yes, what? What? Oh, God, Sybil, what are you talking about? It can't... Oh, God. Forty. What's wrong? Yes, what's wrong? Well, uh, uh, it's the, uh, it's the cabaret. I'm afraid it, um, it can't come. Oh, what are you going to do about it? Yes, what am I going to do? Yes, well, of course, uh, Pity Manuel isn't here. I could have done a knife-throwing act. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can anybody here do a turn? Well, I'd like... Yes, we know. <laughs> anybody else? I could do my impression of birds. Oh, pity you weren't here at lunchtime, Major, when I ruined the turkey. <laughs> Listen, Longshanks. <laughs> it says in your brochure, Cabaret Nightly. And if we don't get it, we want our money back, so think of something quick. Yes, don't worry, I'll think of something quick. <laughs> <laughs> Have 
Commissioner, he did have an entertainer staying with us. He couldn't pay his bills, so he left his equipment instead. Now, where is... Ah, yes, here it is. Ladies and gentlemen, for your entertainment, I present Basil and Friend. <laughs> Hello, little man, and what is your name? Brian. I see Brian. He said Brian. I know what I said. <laughs> Tell me, Brian, Brian, <laughs> what was the weather like when you left? Great, greasy, and brilliantly sunny. What do you say? Scattered showers. <laughs> Bit like you lot, really. Look, Brian, would you like to sing a song? Yes. What song would you like to sing? Goggles, gangles, and geese. <laughs> oh, what a pity, Brian. I don't know. So why don't we sing this one? There's a tiny house. There's a tiny house. By a tiny stream. By a tiny stream. We're a lovely lass. We're a lovely lass. Had a lovely dream. Had a lovely dream. And a dream came true. And a dream came true. Quite unexpectedly. And fell a cat's and a gogan by the sea. Thank you very much. Francis A. Howard was born on... Here, 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 here. Don't tell him when I, when I was born. What a cheek. <laughs> he first entered show business when he entertained the troops in the front line. Yes, I would... Oh, listen, this is true. I was an ENSA. E-N-S-A. Every night shot at. <laughs> and by our troops as well. Yes, I was... No, I was wounded twice. Once in the Bay of Biscay and once in the Dardanelles. <laughs> I've got a VC for that, a Vaseline compound. <laughs> then finally came his demob. Yes, I know. I know I cried my eyes out, I really did. Mind you, you should have seen the demob suit they gave me. It was made by a welder from Civvy Street. <laughs> but before he was actually demobbed, he had to have his final medical. <coughs> oh! <laughs> That's it. I've given you a very thorough examination all over. Yes, I know you have. M my eyes are still watering. <laughs> no, I wouldn't mind, but listen, she's got hands like an Eskimo. <laughs> and in case you're wondering about this lot, it's not mine. Her washing line's broke. I'm puzzled, though, because during my examination, your reflexes were rather slow. Yes, I think it's that stuff they put in your tea, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't half give you heartburn, I can tell you. Yes, and it makes you forgetful as well. I mean, I'm still chasing women, but I've forgotten what for. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, girl, wake up, wake up. <laughs> She's nodding off over there, poor soul. By the way, have you ever felt the urge to fly? Yes, when you gave me the penicillin injection. <laughs> but I didn't give you a penicillin injection. Well, in that case, get your nails cut. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, why should I want to fly? Well, according to my report, you've got crow's feet, a pigeon's chest and sparrow kneecaps. All right, all right. I'll do the funnies. <laughs> now they get carried away. She's a funny woman, this. She likes to get the lines in like that. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> so you could have got Glenda Jackson for the same money, yes. Come on, girl, wake up, wake up. Would you still asleep over there? Oh, listen, nurse, 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 ever so nurse. Give me a pass out. I'm sorry, I can't. I'm afraid you're not A1. <laughs> get out, go on, get out. <laughs> Wait for it. If I was A1, I'd be in the Middlesex Regiment. <laughs> oh, please, oh, no. I'm the audience. But when Francis finally left the army, his first thought was to fly back to the arms of the girl he'd left behind. Oh, I'm in twelve trouble. Francis is returning, and I have found me another. Oh, Fiona, Fiona, I'm back. <laughs> 
back, back from the wall to oh, the one I love. Back, well. wait a minute, girl, wait a minute, I'm finished, Jack. <laughs> oh, she's a funny woman, she really is. Back to the one, back to the one I love. Now. Here, Elf wants is how terribly twilling. Oh, dear, she's developed a limp on her lip. <laughs> Yeah, all right, don't cover up my face, love. I'm the star. You're a funny woman. Don't you see the mummy? Oh, Fiona, fee. Ever so, oh, now. <laughs> Let me look at you. I haven't seen a woman for five years. Mind you, I tell a lie. I tell a lie. There was this one in, in, in Cairo. Yes, what's her name? F- Fatima. Fatima, nice go. Nice go, nice go, yes. She had a beauty spot right here. We used to call her the bint with a mole. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got such a long time for tuppence. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on, girl, come on. It's all good stuff, you know. Oh, Francis, I have some rather bad news. Well, don't look at me, girl. I've been away for five years. <laughs> no. What I mean is, swings have changed since the whole days. Well, they look all very much the same from where I'm sitting, yes. Oh, Fiona, Fiona, it is my line, isn't it? Mm. Fiona, let me hold you again. No, 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 don't touch me. Dear, she has changed, she has changed. No, no, don't, don't hit her. She's changed, changed, ever so changed. I mean, I knew her at school, yes. Two conkers and she was anybody's. (laughs) Francis, I do have some rather bad news. Oh, don't tell me Peter Noon singing two songs this week. (laughs) No, while you were away, I have found another. Oh, no. Oh, for you. This is a bit I like. I like this bit. Nice bit, this. It was a bit of acting for me, you see. Nice bit, this. Oh, Fiona. Oh, no. The one I love, Fiona, with another. Francis, cast aside. But, Frankie, before we part, I have a request. Will you do it for me, like you used to? <laughs> Dear, she's been watching play school again, hasn't she? Look, she's waking up. Look, 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 she's waking up now. Waking up with the wind. Oh, I don't know whether I should. Oh, no, I don't think I should really. Should I? Should I? Oh, well, well, maybe I will. Maybe I will. One, two. Mule train. Ha! Pippity-flopping over here.